Hey, how you doing, guys? How you doing? All right, let's do it to it. Let's see, Queen B D six, Queen here, Queen Mars. Yeah, let's let's check here. Let's see here.
This is actually winning right there, because after takes, that's me. <coughs> Bishop there, and that that attacks the queen, and then still keeps the threat going. So now I can't take, which is good for me. Okay, if I play rook takes, rook intercepts there. See so rook uh, rook takes f one check rook f seven. If rook takes king takes. Um, bishop f six check, king goes back check up. Yep, that should have ended me. See, Bishop takes there. Mirror takes bishop, pawn takes, push. If they're there, and then we win. Let's see here, if we check here, king there, queen comes check, knight takes, and not bishop, but uh, rook checkmate, let's go for it. Let's see if we check here. Rook comes there. Bishop takes. King up. Hmm. Oh boy, 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 boy. Let me see here. We could emphasize a pin. That might be an interesting uh, thing there. If we pin here, we can actually threaten mate.
because if we pin here, he takes there, we can actually take here, win material. Yeah, I'm liking that. Oh, really? Okay. We got to reconsolidate our position now. Let's see here. Hmm. It's okay. It's okay. I'm wondering if rook here, if the rook comes there, then bishop comes in. He moves there, and then we take. Hmm. If we double up rooks here, knight comes in, we come there. And then if the knight comes here to attack the rook, we win the bishop twins material. Oh, he's going to try to take our knight. Oh, wait a second. If we play uh, rotates bishop, king takes, bishop check, pawn push, check, we pick up material too. Nice. That's even better. Even better. Queen here, rook there, queen there, check. Hmm. So queen e4, if he checks on uh, d or c, we can actually come up to f, f7. Yeah, I'm liking this. Queen to e2, rook to g1, queen takes, rook intercepts, queen takes, bishop takes, wins the queen. Okay, doggy.
Yeah. How you doing? That's great. Great to hear. Boy, this is an interesting puzzle for sure. I'm wondering... See, what we could do is play uh, Rook Takes uh, D4. I was thinking if Queen Takes... I really I don't really see much that we can do. We potentially could play there, but then the queen would take the knight, so I'm not sure. Well, maybe we can play... Knight takes g4, king takes g4. Bishop takes... Let's see if we play knight takes, king takes, bishop takes, if uh, pawn takes, rook takes, if king comes forward, then we actually mate with f6 at that point. The reason knight uh, g4 is a uh, really good move is because of, um, because it attacks the queen and uh, attacks a rook at the same time so it forces the king to actually go there and I'm um, thinking that if knight takes g4, king takes g4, bishop takes if um, pawn takes, rook takes, queen takes, queen takes rook intercepts we are up a lot of pawns. I think we have enough compensation for... Yeah, he only has three pawns and we have six pawns. That's enough to win. That'd be enough to win. And there's no real entry points for the rooks to come in. And these pawns, these uh, three pawns would be easy to uh, pick off these these three pawns after all the trades happen. Actually, these these pawns right there. Oops, sorry, that pawn's gone, so it would be that these three pawns here would be easy to uh, pick off. What do you guys think? What do you think, Team Chess Cruncher? Do you like that idea? How you doing? Oh, really good. Yeah, we're working on a puzzle here, and I'll put in the kind of move sequence to see what you think. I'll I'll put it in. I'll see what you uh, what you think about this. Knight takes g4. Um, king takes g4. Bishop takes d4. Uh, C takes d4. Rook takes d4, check. Queen takes d4. Queen takes d4. Rook f4. What do you think about what do you think about that line? The reason I was thinking of rook takes g4 was, I mean not rook, knight takes g4, sorry. It's because the knight that's here 
Forex, the Rook, and the Queen. And uh, he has to be, take. He could play, I guess, Queen. Um, I guess he could play Queen F3. Hmm. Maybe he could play Queen F3 at that point. I don't know. I think Rook takes would uh, would be an interesting move. Rook takes D4. No, we could actually take with the Knight at that point. Yeah, we'd be able to F um, Knight takes G4 if uh, Queen F3. Uh, we could play Knight takes F2 check. And if Rook takes F2, we could actually slit uh, basically go down to a uh, one pawn endgame because we're up actually three pawns at this point. Actually, two pawns, which is enough in an endgame to win. So, huh. Let's give it a try. I'm hoping this is right. Okay, bishop takes. Rook takes. Oh, the king moves. Interesting. Okay, so he's going to give up the queen. Okay. Wow. That's altogether different. There's a double check on... Um, There's a double check on a, a knight f3, uh, king h3. Queen h2, king g4. Knight uh, e5 again, check. King g5. And then h6 is mate at that point. Yeah. The, uh, I'll do the line out for you. Knight f3, double check. King, uh, king can't go to f1, uh, g1, because that would end up with mate on h2, so that would be a silly move. Only he's forced to actually come up the board to h3. And then what we do is we play queen to h2, check. King has to is forced to go to g4. Uh, Knight goes to uh, e5 again, check. King goes to g5, and then I believe h6 is actually mate. Let's give it a go. Some's calling out um, uh, bishop h6. If bishop takes h6, queen uh, h8, check, king e7, queen g7, check, 
And I think that that's mate. Yeah, I'm thinking that's I'm thinking it's mate at that point. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And he's gonna actually have to win. We play uh, bishop h6. I'm gonna say he plays uh, queen. Queen takes g6 at that point. I'm gonna say he plays queen takes g6. Yeah, let's let's give it a go. Oh no! Ouch! Oh, that didn't feel good. Okay. Wonder what what happened. Huh. It could be that we retreat the queen back. We could actually play, uh, I mean, retreat the bishop back to f4 and then try to reroute the queen into, um... No, that wouldn't work because the queen's there. We'll have to see why that, that's a, that was a different one for sure. Huh. Something's calling out uh, rook, rook to uh, b7. Rook b7 is calling out for some reason. But I'm not sure if after rook b7 he doesn't have rook a1. Hmm. I'm also considering rook, uh, rook, c t uh, rook c7 too as well. I'm also considering that move as well. Wait a second. Could we actually... Wait, I'm thinking... Let me see. No. Drat. I was trying to see if we couldn't set up a Lucinda, but I think uh, Lucinda endgame position with uh, rook... D4, but I think he'd play rook b7 at that point. And, um. Oh, I guess, I guess we could then, queen, couldn't we? If rook b7, we then would be able to go a8 equals queen, wouldn't we? Huh. Oops. I did plus, sorry, hold on. I'll fix that. Bishop D, uh, there, there, so, and if, uh, rook, uh, D4, rook, uh, A1, check, rook, uh, A4, rook takes, A4, check, king takes, A4, C2, Um, a8 equals queen, king d2, and we've, uh, king d2, and we figured out how to actually mate in this line. Jeremy Silman has a, uh, idea based on it. I think we can play a Lucinda idea here. I think there's a Lucinda idea with rook d4. And I think that actually wins. Because we go rook d4, if king a, f if there, there, he, we take, here, he pushes, we queen, he comes up, then we can actually start bringing the queen in. And if he comes over here, we, uh, we actually bring the queen in here. If he comes down, we can actually check, he walks in front, and then we bring the king in. There's a, four, there's a combination that we learned in our endgame, how to actually win with that. I'm almost sure that that's that's right.
trying to figure out is see there's two moves that we can actually go down. There's bishop g5, bishop g5, or um, queen takes g6, check. I'm not sure if bishop um, bishop g5 first isn't the move because that threatens uh, him to have to play rook f7. Which is a really strong attacking move that we can uh, really deal with. See, I'm thinking if we played bishop um, g5, well, I guess he could block with uh, knight, uh, bishop g5, knight f6, couldn't he? Yeah, knight f6, and then he stops all of our attack. Okay, interesting. So maybe g6 is forced. Maybe, maybe, maybe rather than that, would it be bishop? Could it be bishop d6? Bishop d6 is an interesting move as well. I didn't consider that. Bishop d6. Well, bishop d6. If uh, knight f6 at that point, we actually could play potentially bishop takes. I mean, not bishop, queen. Well, I guess we could play bishop takes, couldn't we? Yeah, that would that would win material, wouldn't it? Yeah, bishop bishop takes. What am I thinking? Bishop takes these seven is perfect. And then if uh, queen uh, queen d seven, we can actually play. Um, Hmm, that's an interesting one after that. I'm kind of puzzled after this here. This is what I was thinking. Queen there, knight there. Oops. Bishop here, knight here. And then we could play bishop takes. And if queen comes up, I guess we could trade, couldn't we? King takes, and then bishop takes, and rook takes. We'd be up a whole piece. No, we'd be up an exchange in that line. So, okay, bishop here. If rook comes up, We could actually take here. King moves and he's in, and he's in a pin at that point. Um, so then we could actually play uh, rook takes bishop. Rook takes. Huh, boy, this is a very complicated uh, position. Because I'm not sure. Let's see, queen takes rook there. We could, I guess, play king h7 getting ready to threaten to check there but I'm not sure huh hmm see queen uh, rook there queen h knight comes in We check. King comes up. I really don't see that. I think he's safe at that point. I think he's safe at that point. Okay. Yeah. Just trying to find out, see if any, if there's anything wrong with uh, Bishop to D6. Uh, let me see, bishop d6, uh, rook f7. We can actually play queen takes g5 at that point. 
our two six at that point. So in theory, we could play this here, rook up, queen over. If king tries to run there, you have rook takes, rook takes, and then rook e1, and do kind of like a Morphe type of maneuver. And we're threatening total devastation at that point. It'd be kind of like the opera game a little bit. Could we actually do, um, though it might be more forcing to play uh, queen g6, rook uh, f7, then bishop uh, d6, king moves, rook takes, uh, bishop rook takes, and then rook over. I'm thinking that my bishop d6 is too slow. Well, boy, this is a uh, tricky one. Trying to see, because there's usually forcing uh, moves that happen in, in these lines, and I'm trying to uh, visualize in my mind. Sometimes it helps when, when I don't look at the board. I'm thinking it might, I think I got it now. That did help kind of looking away for a second. Okay, let's see. Bishop uh, d6, rook uh, e7, bishop takes e7. If uh, rook takes e7, queen, See, queen takes g6, check, king, f8, so, I guess, no, I guess that wouldn't uh, uh, work very well, would it? So now we're doing our time. Perfect. Let's try Bishop D six. It might be wrong. Uh, might have been queen. Let's let's check this one out. puzzles a day. Hmm. It depends on um, what level of puzzles you're working on too. Should I 
should have seen this. This was a straightforward one. Okay. Let's check this one out here. This one was interesting. And it depends on um, the quality that you do on the puzzles, too. I know that sounds like what? Okay. So you attack the queen and then you threaten uh, mate. Okay, that's kind of a odd one. Now this one I'm puzzled about. Let's see if uh, if it was queen takes. Nope. Wasn't that either. Hmm. Was that? Wow, that's interesting. So you're drawing the queen away. I sh didn't even see that. Didn't even consider that. Okay, so boom. Yeah, that that would be that is a forcey movement, mates. Okay. Wow, that's that is strong. One second, I have to uh, put it on uh, AFK for just a sec. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Let's do a uh, Magnus Endgame. We haven't done that. No, I don't do uh, p puzzles on chess tempo, no. We're trying to get to 50. We're getting close. Let's let's do one thing. I want to see how we did on our hourly before I set that up. See if we got uh, first at all. Oh, third. So close. Got third place. I was only two away from uh, tying for uh, for uh, first. So close. I'm not really sure. I I'm <laughs> I don't really know. I usually just do chess uh, chess.com ones, so I'm not sure about the any of the apps or anything. See, that's good, 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 good. Oops, I almost got a queen. I knew I forgot something. Good, good, good. Okay, good. Still good, still good. Okay, all's good. Okay, let's do it. put it into a study. This is a game between uh, Magnus Carlsen versus Hikaru Nakamura. So, saved me a lot of time of having to write his name out, so that was nice. This is London. Yep, perfect. Magnus played uh, queen takes uh, f6. Magnus is, the, is is not only happy to exchange queens, but 
the, the initial exchange of queens actually help him. The fewer pieces that are on the board will increase the chance of an endgame. And Madness is really, really a good endgame player. So Hikaru takes. Madness plays bishop f4. Now the rooks are connected, so uh, all out war. You could play uh, knight e4, which is an interesting move. That's what Madness uh, could have played. It's an interesting continuation. Um, then, then Hokaro could play bishop d4 and knight d6, which uh, would uh, potentially be attacking this pawn. Or maybe uh, bishop uh, e7 could be played. And then bishop f4 would be played by Magnus. There's also one more line, bishop uh, e5 to stop uh, f4. Then knight uh, to c5 with the idea of still attacking the uh, b7 pawn. So it's all based on the weakness of uh, b7 in some of these lines. So rook a, d, 8. This forces things with the knight. And so if Hakaro tried uh, knight to, uh, one second, oops. Sorry, if Hakaro tried knight c4 on this one. There's a uh, Magnus could play a to uh, b, not b, d8. Uh, wrong spot. And knight d5. Hold on. Let's see, four, knight d5. Oh, oh, a, sorry, a, b, knight d5. There we go. There we go. Now that's another interesting continuation. Yeah, Ally Chess has our IC, uh, leadchess.org has puzzles too, so if you're, you could do that too. What if he takes on, uh, on B, uh, B2? Well, then he actually could take there. And if pawn takes, rook takes, rook uh, rook takes. Actually, no, he wouldn't be able to take with the rook. He'd have to take with the knight. And then you could actually play rook um, b1. Knight comes back, and then you could play bishop to c7 at that point, and the, you're going to be winning this pawn back, or potentially you could do that or you could actually just play bishop uh, takes right away after knight takes, rook takes and there's pawns on opposite color of the board and so if he plays there you, you win a piece there so he would have to um, play rook over here and then you could play bishop to b8 and at this point this is kind of like a uh, a really interesting idea. You have knight. You actually can't because that would lose a piece. So, yeah, you're gonna go down a whole pawn. So, so what what would have to be played is a5 at this point. So I guess it would be kind of a crazy position. Bishop takes. Uh, rook f. Uh, hold on. Maybe I did. I did have that. OK. Oh boy, I'm sorry, I have the wrong moves uh, sequence at that point. It was a b1, sorry. 
For some reason, I saw AD8. I think that was black. And then now you drop the knight in. The bishop takes and rook f d1. Now, now this makes more sense. This makes a lot more sense. And then b5 to support the knight. Bishop c7 to attack the rook. And rook c8 to attack the bishop, but the bishop's protected. Then bishop uh, f1 with the idea of tr uh, trading and getting rid of the pr uh, protectorate of b7. So bishop e5 is forced. You have to retreat back at that point. Bishop takes. Uh, bishop takes c8. And bishop takes b5. And bishop d8 at that point. And Magnus has a better pawn structure at this when it has a slight edge, very small, small, small edge. Uh, Mattis plays AD1. Hakaro actually takes the bishop, which is, I mean, the knight, which is actually a dubious move. You don't really want to trade your most active. He gives up his remaining bishop for the knight, creating a more, more pawn islands for uh, white. But that's not a real problem. Knight, um, knight to c4 is an interesting idea with uh, and b3. Bishop takes c, and then c takes, and then knight d4. Bishop b3 to attack, and bishop b6. Bishop d5, oops, not e5, sorry, bishop d5. And black still has work to do to neutralize the position, but this was kind of a better continuation for Hikaru. And then knight a4 to take advantage of the weak c4 pawn. He wants to force the matters, Hokaro does, with his knight, but he will be disappointed with the result after c4, knight c3, uh, rook d2, exclaim at this point, because that defends everything, and also prepares to take, rook takes, bishop takes, Actually, uh, black gets the E square, but another minor piece comes off the board, increasing the power of the bishop pair. Because there's no pawns in the center here, the more pieces that come off the board, like the more um, major pieces, the stronger the bishop pair actually becomes. 92. Check. As the bishop vacates f4, uh, this check is no longer dangerous. So he could have tried, which was, which was uh, what I was thinking would have might have been better. But bishop c6, which takes c6 at this point, is an exclam move. It's kind of a interesting continuation. Wait a second, I thought I did the exclam mark. There we go. B takes, and then I'm thinking rook a1, and the knight is actually trapped here. The knight's gone. So that's why he had to check, but it, the check doesn't have any um, teeth to it. Mattis just plays rook, uh, I mean king h2, rook d8. Bishop e3. Bishop d5 uh, could be played too to block. And then knight uh, e7 to attack the bishop. Bishop g5. Uh, rook d7. Then bishop g2. Will be uh will be similar to what eventually happens in the game, but at this moment, not so much. Knight c3, 
to try to get this knight, he's trying to get the knight back active again. Otherwise, the knight's going to find itself very passive and non-playable uh, uh, in the game. So we have to get our knight back in the fray. A3. Um, rook D3, which is a dubious move again. It's not a, a strong move. Knight D1 is actually better. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, Bishop C5. Uh, Rook D3 to go after the pawn. Bit rookie one to check and get get some activity. White keeps the upper hand, but this line would be better for black than what happens actually in the game. So it's really good. Rook uh, c1. Knight d1. Bishop b4. Rook d7, bishop uh, c5. White might be able to trap the knight uh, on d1. That's what white's trying to do, potentially with uh, playing the this move, maybe. Uh, you have to get rid of this knight, though. So it's kind of a, right now, not so much. Um, knight b2, rook c2, knight a4, and bishop to uh, e3. Black uh, temporarily acti activates his knight uh, and has not improved his position. So, oh no, black black temporary has an inactive knight. Sorry and has not improved his position yet. So this knight on a4 is inactive at the moment. It's not really doing anything. And his position is not as is not strong at all. White's bishops dominate the entire board at this present moment. So knight b, uh, b6. Magnus plays uh, c5, which is an interesting continuation on, on his move. He maintains the tension. Instead of winning material with um, bishop takes, pawn takes, rook b2, rook d4, uh, a knight, a rook, I mean bishop d5, knight a4, rook takes, b6, knight takes, bishop takes, C4, rook takes, and then rook takes, C4, uh, B7. White would, uh, white could have won a pawn, but already knows that, we already know that Carlson does not consider the, these type of positional games as won yet. So he wants to, uh, push the position for more, um, points, as I like to say, more of an initiative. And so that's what he, hold on. Go. Knight d5 was actually played here. Hold on. Knight c8 could be played too. Then uh, rook b2. Uh, knight, uh, e, knight e8, uh, e7. And then king g3, activating your king. You want to get your king closer to the game because eventually pieces are going to start coming off the board. More centralized king, more powerful. So, um, wait a second, did I? Okay, good. Uh, rook uh, d2. Knight f6, rook takes is an interesting move again. Uh, one of the grandmasters says keeping rooks to complicate the matters would be uh, better 
uh, to give black a fortress position. This actually doesn't give black a fortress position at all. So by taking the pieces off the board, it actually helps um, white to make it so that black can't fortify his position. Knight takes the rook, king g3, uh, king f8, f4. Many players would have improved their dark square bishop to that square like Many of us would have played bishop f4, king e8, and then uh, bishop to d6, and tried to uh, trap the king and keep it out of play. But Madness sees that it's better to uh, get your pawns more active, keep the play on the king side and on the queen side with his bishops. So it's a lot better to do it that way. Uh, so knight f6. Bishop f3. King e7. And then f5 exclaim. He potentially could make an outside pass pawn. If this if he takes, yeah. Carlson opens the position a bit. He continues to follow the principle that the fewer the pieces remain on the board, the better the bishop pairs work together. Uh, White will uh, improve his king by moving it to king to g5. And Madness will be able to protect his isolated pawns and basically walk them down. When, uh, we've, we've studied in Jeremy Silman Endgame where pawns that make it, two pawns that make it to the fifth rank, uh, protect themselves against the king. So, uh, g takes by Hikaru, g takes by Madness, and then king d7. King f4, knight e8. Perhaps black should have kept, uh, White's king away from g5 by playing knight to h7 um, exclaim. But this isn't Hakaro's style. He's more of an attacker. So this would be like a retreating move, and it just wouldn't be fun. So there, king e7, bishop c3, Bishop F6, I mean pawn of 6, H4, Knight F8, E4, Knight D7, uh, King uh, E5, D2, uh, uh, E5, and then Bishop E2. White will be able to press, but Black fortress may hold in the end and be a draw. Uh, King g5 now is an exclaim move. The king gets closer to um, the king side pawns. King e7. Black can do little if uh, black tries f6 uh, check. The king goes to h5 exclaim. Now uh, bishop takes c6, and then king g6 could actually come to pass. Let me see here. Six bishop takes 
two six leads to a forced uh, win. This clam. And then uh, H5 is also an exclam move. But this is a more forced forcing win. King takes C, Bishop D4, H7 check, King H5, Knight F6, Bishop takes F6, G takes F6, H4, King takes, King H6, B5, King G7, A5, H5, B4, A takes, pawn takes, H6, B6, uh, B3, H7, B2, A8 equals queen, B1 equals queen, and then knight to uh, d8, I mean queen d8, and white wins the queen ending. Uh, bishop to f4, a6, h4, interesting continuation. King f8, bishop g3, knight f6, bishop d6, check, king e8. Going uh, the other way is worse. So like, uh, F uh, G eight that this is actually a worse way of doing it. King F four King H seven King E three H six D three G six pawn takes King takes King C seven R C three um, king c3, uh, knight h5, bishop takes c, pawn takes, king b4, f5, a5, f4, should takes f4, knight takes f4, king b6. King takes a6. And white wins because what will eventually happen is he'll win the other pawn. And three, the three pawn, uh, two pawns will out um, outnumber the knight. King f4. d7. Bishop g2. d8. King d8. Uh, g5. E8, H5, exclaim, he shows his cards right now, that's what, that's what it was said, knight, uh, F6, if A5, A4, would be played, so H, H6, exclaim at this point. Exchanging the G pawn, so knight h5, king h5, f6, king g5, h, and then king h4, uh, exclaim by Magnus. 
stepping out of reach of Black's knight, leaving Black with no choice but to uh, uh, take. Uh, so he has to take the pawn now. King h5. Excuse me. King f6. King takes. King g4. There's also knight d7 to go, try to go after the pawn. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. King g7. Uh, and white ha has a paralyzed knight that really can't do anything. Can't go here, can't go there, can't go there, can't go there. And if the king moves, he's in Zook Swamp. It's all over at that point. King g7 exclaim. The, uh, let me see, how are we doing? Oh, perfect. Uh, let me see. King g7. The king dominates, uh, and man is correctly judged whether the black knight can harm him or not, and he can't. Hikaru plays a really good move though, knight d4 exclaim. So even in such a of a perilous position, he plays uh, that move. Bishop uh, e4. Um, knight f2. And Madness plays a really nice move, bishop b1 exclaim. <clears throat> King knight g4, f4, uh, bishop f4. Uh, f6, knight f6. Oops, not knight f6, sorry, pawn f6. Fixing the f pawn, basing his counterplay on, on attack, and enforcing the matters with his knight. So if. Um, Hokaro tried 93 or 92, bishop c7, and there's actually two lines. There's knight c3 or uh, knight d4. So we'll check knight c3 out first. Uh, bishop c2, uh, knight uh, e3, bishop d3, knight g4. A5, Knight uh, D5, Bishop B4, and White wins. So let's see if the, if Knight D4 is any better. Bishop E4, Rook F2, Bishop takes the pawn. Knight takes f5 check, king f6, and knight d4 to go back. King e5 to attack the knight. Knight b5. Bishop a5, because we want to keep the bishops on the board, it's our only counterplay. Knight f3 check, king d5. And f4, knight f4 check. King c6 to attack the, the knight, try to go for the pawn. Knight takes a4, a3. Bishop takes a6. White's last pawn decides the outcome in, in his favor. Black would also lose if he sacrificed one of the knights for the pawn. The two bishops would defeat the knight together. The two bishops would would overwhelm the knight. So bishop e4. Knight f2. Bishop b1. Knight g4. Bishop b4. King f2. Black's counterplay is logical. In order to proceed, White has to give up the f pawn, uh, further reducing the material. So there. 
So bishop takes check. Not check, but bishop takes c b7. This glam. He could have tried bishop g, also possible, then um, g4. King g6. c6. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. And then bishop d6. Knight takes f6 check. Uh, king takes c6, f6. Knight e7. Bishop takes pawn. King d7. Bishop f3. Uh, and white will probably win here. Now there's one more. Knight d3. Bishop c7. Knight takes c. King takes the pawn. The limited material on the board, white will eventually win in that line. So, um, Hakara plays knight b3 exclaim. The world champion, world uh, champion endgame genius uh, shines through and he finds the winning move. White to move. I'll be right back. White uh, to move. Uh, double exclaim. White to move, double exclaim. Let's say, let me a drink and I'll give you a chance to figure it out. You're white, you're Magnus. There's a double exclaim move here. So take your time, stop it here, see what you can find. Sorry about that. That was my uh, the headset fell off the thing. Bishop E. Uh, I know that was a pretty big bang there. Sorry, it fell on the ground. Okay, so you're saying Bishop E. 
three. Try one more time. Give it another shot. You're white. Do you need a hint? Well, I'll, I'll just show you because uh, this is, this would be a hard one to find. King takes the f6 is double exclaim. No, it was that was a good good effort though. Good effort. Good effort. Um, they're saying that if Madness would have played bishop uh, d6 here, this would have actually been a mistake. A mistake. Because after takes, uh, king takes f6, knight takes d6, pawn takes. Hold on, let me make sure I got this. <clears throat> d6, knight d6. Wait a second, where am I? Hold on, let me make sure I have this. F5 takes, D takes. Ah, I got it. Bishop C6 check, King D8. C takes. Okay, perfect. That's right. If knight c5 for black, it'd be a mistake. There's also uh, knight b2, which is actually an exclaim move. That's the that is the best move. But if and the more natural knight f uh, or c5 loses the king to f5. Now, if uh, knight, if rook d3 or knight d3, sorry, a4, bishop a4, a5, bishop c6, knight f2, b5, h3, a4, g1. Bishop d2, uh, d1, h3. The knight's almost trapped. Bishop c2, g1. Bishop e4, h3. King f6, g1. Bishop d5, knight e2. King e5. Knight c3, bishop c6, knight e2. This is a long continuation. g1, bishop g2, king e2, h3, knight uh, g3. This is a lot of knight maneuvers, I know. Well, this is sometimes how how the position goes, and if 
If you don't play it just right, you'll get your knight trapped. He finally got his knight out of being trapped. A lot of, a lot of headache of having to figure that out too. C5. White actually wins here. Surprisingly, I know that's a humongous line, but that's that's a line that could have happened. Now this is a much shorter line. Knight C4. Exclam. A5, exclaim. Let me see here. Five exclaim for black. <clears throat> King D five. Ninety three. Exclaim. So black's the one that's getting all the exclaims now. King C five. Knight G four. Exclaim again. Black's the exclaim person right now. King B6. 95. Now the exclaim stop. It should be five, uh, B5. Knight F7. D7. E5 takes takes 
and it should be a draw here because if takes here takes up because if you take here takes here here and if here that that stops and then he has to play if he comes here then he gets in so optimum play now he takes f uh, f4 and then there's one more exclam and it's king e5 double exclam I mean king f uh, e2 if uh, rook if knight takes there king takes a knight e3 and then c6 king d8 bishop takes pawn and the table proves that black has no effective fortress at this point Man just played f6 uh, mistake here. First mistake for Magnus. A mistake that could have uh, took the win away, but the win, the win is this move here. C6 exclaim. This that's the winning move. Uh, C takes. Bishop takes check and then king uh, f8 now there's two lines there's a4 or there's uh, bishop d5 then we'll look at a4 first uh, a5 bishop b5 knight g3 bishop d3 king f7 f6 h5 bishop c5 r c4 check king f8 king e6 uh, g3 king d6 knight h5 king e5 G, F7. White wins. Now let's check out the other winning line. Knight C3. Bishop C4 uh, here. A5. King uh, D4. Knight d1, a4, king e7, uh, bishop b3, f2, king c5. And bishop f6. Uh, and bishop e6 uh, at that point to protect the pawn. Winning, uh, that's a winning line. All right. So a5, a4, uh, king f7, bishop uh, d5 check. And then uh, Hakara plays the only losing move, which is a double question mark blunder. This natural move loses due to the fabulous idea found by Magnus Carlsen. The king should stay on um, g6. And this would have actually uh, drawn the game. Potentially drawn the game. Uh, c6. Knight takes. Bishop takes. King F7. Exclaim.
bishop d5 check, king f8, bishop c4, knight c3, bishop b3, king e8, How is uh oh I did B five, I apologize. There we go, E eight. D four ninety two check. K C four C one X glam, oops. Exclaim. Our um, if King C five, Knight uh, two F three is it? Oops. Knight two F three is an exclaim as well. Now there's one single move that's another double exclam, which is a brilliant move by Magnus. Queen f4, double exclam. Magnus almost used up all of his remaining two minutes to find this move. The king tied up the knights and wins one of them with the bishop. Knight c2. C6, C3 check, E5, exclam, I takes A4. The other uh, way uh, would win, let's see here. Bishop b3, b6, take c2, a4, c, King F7, Bishop takes A, Carl resigned at this point, so Carlson obtained the bishop here at the end of the opening. Soon after, Hakaro created an additional isolated pawn in Manus's camp uh, chain, but that meant that he had to fight with two knights against two bishops. Hakaro was not able to obtain anything concrete with his knight uh, activity, and after the rooks exchanged, Magnus uh, opened Black's position up beautifully. He obtained a winning position with a, with his magical brilliance, of course, of his moves. Sacrifice, after which uh, some mistakes creeped in from both sides. Carlson won the game in the end, though. And that's all that mattered. Okay. I am going to say adieu on that one. I wanted to uh, thank you all for uh, logging on and, and participating. I've got to do one thing first. Do you have any questions on the game before I log off? Do you have any questions? I mean, on this end game. That's what I should ask. I don't want to. <laughs> the whole point is for learning. Oh, you want to do a uh, couple chess puzzles? Okay, we'll do a couple chess puzzles really quick. I could do six. I'll set up a quick six puzzles and then 
Okay. I know, wasn't that a brilliant end game? That was... We'll do a quick, I'll do a quick six puzzles and then, and then we'll, then I gotta log off. But we should always do some puzzles. Make sure I got this right. Yep. Perfect. Okay, black to move. Mate two. There you go. Nice work. Back to move, mate, too. This is a fun one. Think puzzle rush and you got it. Think puzzle rush and you got it. Yep, there you go. There it is. It's a puzzle rush idea to the T. I like the one that we found. I think there was another one, but the one we found was a more puzzle rush idea. And I like those type of tactical uh, knockouts. Those are always fun to uh, have played. Oops, I almost forgot a queen. Where's the queen? Right there. And then the knight. Do, 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 do. Good. Do, 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 do. All right. Black to move mate into. Let's see if let's see if you got it. go. There you go. Nice. That was, that was removing the guard right there. That was a good one.
Like to move mate to. There's actually two mates. Yep. There's actually two mates. Okay. Okay, uh, give it a. Uh, We'll see. We'll let. Uh, hey, Cam, give it your best shot. Well, you're black, and it's mate two. Black to move mate two. Yep. Okay, that's the first one. Good job. Good job. You got it. Good work. Night G Night G three. If um hold on, we'll give him a chance. If H takes G three, what do you play now? What do you play now? Uh what's the mate in one? No, it's okay. Not a problem. There's mate and one. Do you see it? Okay. Not a problem. Perfect. Yep, we'll do that. Well, we'll set up one and we'll we'll let you uh, solve this one. Okay, Cam. So don't worry. Yep, there you go. Nice work. Nice job. Yep. There's uh, there's two different. There's another mate too. If um, after the night comes here, if uh, F takes. So it's there's a couple different mates that would happen. That's a mate. And if let me see here. If the knight comes here, if king moves over, then you have mate on e1 as well. So you have three different mates. Three. It's really really cool. But we're gonna we'll set one up. This looks like a really fun mate and two for black. So let's oops let's give it a shot. Oops, come on. So it's black to move, black to move, mate and two, black to move, mate and two.
We'll give you uh, some time to think about it. I think it's knight g6 if I'm not mistaken here. Knight g3, sorry. Knight g3. And then if pawn takes, f takes, uh, g is mate. And if p plays anything else, we'll say pawn move here, that f, uh, f1, yeah. Yeah, and if takes here, then the rook. So any any move, any move, uh, you if any of these rooks, this that, if any of these pieces move, it's actually rook h1 mate. Yep. We'll do one more. This is our last one. That was a interesting. That was a um very tough puzzle uh, puzzle so don't feel bad remember it's all about learning Got that. Everything looks optimum. So this is the last one. So black to move, mate in two. There you go. Okay. There we go. Okay, that's the last one. Do you have any questions about any of the prior puzzles we went over? Okay, well then I will say adieu. Thank you for all logging on, participating. Great job on uh, all the puzzles. Those were hard. Uh, you know what? We're learning, improving, keep pushing forward. Always taking what we know, like what Bruce Lee says, and applying it. Being willing to do something with it always. And treasure your victories. Learn from your losses. Remember that mistakes do not define you. It's how you handle the mistake that defines you as a chess player and a person. But choices on a board are vital too. 
and the choice to receive the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior is very important. So as much as choices on the board, that is as well. And that's why we, uh, when we study chess, Team Chess Cruncher has the Team Chess Cruncher motto of hanging up your coat, hanging up your hat, sitting down and studying when most won't. Team Chess Cruncher does, and that makes all the difference. As Wesley so says, serve the Lord Jesus. And as I say, God bless. And I'll see you next time on Chess Cruncher TV. Have a blessed morning, afternoon, evening, and Lord willing, I'll be back on tomorrow. Remember what Hannibal Smith said. The forcing moves in chess are the backbone of forcing combinations, of course, like what the tactics that we do are forcing moves. And so even inside of a random position, he says there's always a plan. And when you find that position, that plan in the random position, we get to say, I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, two thumbs up, hoorah, be blessed, and I will see you tomorrow. Have fun studying chess and get well rested and have... Uh, you know what? Honor the Lord Jesus with your talents and gifts. Be blessed. Bye-bye.